guys, my name is Nikki aka The Dragon Queen and today I'm here with my August wrap up. I did really well this month honestly. You have a hint of what I've read already but I didn't go into too much detail because I did start uh, the reading quest this month and I really wanted to do an actual wrap up. So here we go. First and foremost, I finished Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by J.K. Rowling. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. This was the first of the second of the Harry Potter series that I gave 5 out of 5 stars to. The rest I think I gave 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed this book. I was really pleased with how they summarized everything. I was excited how they ended everything. And I'm finally glad that I finished the Harry Potter series, so yay! Ah, oh, that was crazy, though. Like, the, the ride to get to this was insane. Anyway, the second book that I finished was The Magicians by Lev Grossman. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. Overall, I did really enjoy this story. It is basically the, um, the first season, like, the first season of the show is a is equal to the book, which is very rare. The only thing that the show differs in from the book is that the book doesn't really focus on Julia. The, the TV show puts a lot more focus on Julia, who is Quentin's friend in the, in the book. So there is a difference with that, which honestly I kind of like it without her in it, but in the in the mo or show, it does add a little bit of a twist, so that is kind of nice too. It's a toss-up. Honestly, I can't recommend one over the other. I think they're both good reads, and watching the TV show first didn't really ruin anything in the book for me, which is a little crazy because I would think that it would like spoil it for me but it really didn't. Next I finished Carval by Stephanie Garber. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. I did thoroughly enjoy this book. It is unique and it is a uh, it is very whimsical. I think I've discussed this book before but I do recommend this book and it's if you're looking for a book that has pirates in it, this would be a great one. If you're looking for a book that has, um, not realis realism, but a realistic romance, I guess, then this could be one. Warning though, there is some abuse in it. Just a fair warning. Thankfully, it's not abuse from the love interest, so it's not so bad, but it's still kind of obnoxious. Up next with 4 out of 5 stars is The Battle of the Labyrinth by Rick Riordan. This was the fourth book in the Percy Jackson series, first series. I obviously enjoyed it, 4 out of 5 stars. I liked how he added in real people from like your from our history and he adds in characters from mythology into the mix and that made it real that made it interesting for me and there was also there's little snippets of Hercules mentioned how he did things so they kind of gave hints on certain steps along the way and I like how they have um, Niccolo I believe his name is in this one more he is the son of a different god I don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't gotten that far but he is pretty badass so I like seeing him and then of course Annabeth is involved as well. And then immediately after reading The Battle of the Labyrinth I had to jump into The Last Olympian which I gave 5 out of 5 stars. Um, again this is by Rick Riordan. It is the final book in the series and I think it summarized everything pretty damn well. Like I was honestly surprised the way it was taken. Um, not in the way that you, I expected the bad guys at the end, like who the bad guys were. That part I knew was going to happen. The part I wasn't entirely sure how it was going to happen was what he had asked for from the gods. 
So I enjoyed that twist. I also enjoyed there is a small kind of-ish love triangle maybe thing and I like how that one ended. Um, it wasn't obnoxious in any form of way which as you know I'm not a love triangle person so that being said highly recommend the entire series. Can't believe it took me this long to read this series. After I finished off that series, I wanted to take a little break and jump into something I haven't tried before, so I picked up Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. Overall, I did thoroughly enjoy this book. It was, I think it's actually part of a multiple book series. I ha Don't quote me on that though. I have to check to see if that's true. But it follows um, a man who is introduced to London Below, which is kind of a magical-ish London where people get lost in. And if you're in London Below, it's harder to see you in London Above. And I thought it was interesting how Neil Gaiman incorporated in the real world a not-so-real world just below the surface. and. I, I also was amazed how he used simple things like the subway system to jog those two together. Things that people go on every single day, you're suddenly, you go on a different one, you're suddenly in London below and have no idea how to get back out. So that was, that was clever. I have to say, I am really enjoying Neil Gaiman lately. Like, I'm really enjoying him. Speaking of series, the next book I picked up was The Sorceress by Michael Scott. This is the third book in the uh, Nicholas Flamel series. I've been listening to these on audiobook from my library, and honestly, I'm, I'm really, really into the story. It This one focused on Nicholas Flamel's wife, and you get to learn more about her past and who she truly is, and dive into all that mess of a story and you get to see really how powerful she is without being over powerful. And that's one thing I've actually um, enjoyed with this series is it's very easy, it's very very easy to overpower a character, especially someone who's 700 plus years old. So when you overpower a character, that means they can't lose. If they can't lose, it's no fun for me to read the story because there's no chance for, like, there's no point. Like, I'm, I know they're going to win. So one thing that Michael Scott does very well is even though these two are super powerful, like, these people are super powerful, they have flaws. They fuck up. They end up causing problems or wearing themselves out or draining themselves, they can die. And that is, um, is amazing to me because you're actually worried at all times that somebody's going to die. And I like that in a series. So there was a couple of near-death experiences for multiple characters, and there's a couple of potential death experiences for multiple characters. I recommend the series. Honestly and truly, it's pretty addicting. It's surprising how addicting it is. Next, I finally picked up Ensnared by A.G. Howard, and this is the final book in the trilogy. Finally read it. I gave it five out of five stars, and it was phenomenal. So good. Um, now, I mentioned a love triangle earlier. There is an obvious love triangle in this book. Obvious love triangle. I applaud. I applaud A.G. Howard on how she handled the love triangle. I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to tell you what happens. But I fucking am so happy with how she handled this story. The ending surprised me. I did not expect it. I did not expect what was going on where the characters were confused, you were confused, there was no foreshadowing regarding some of the twists and turns, and I couldn't put the book down once I picked it up. I just, I needed to finish it, and I finished it in like, in like one night. I just stayed up and read it all. It was amazing. 
amazing. A.G. Howard is one of my all-time favorite authors of all time. I said all time twice. That's how much. That's how much I love this book. I'm not even joking. Following The Sorceress, I picked up book four of the Nicholas Flamel series by Michael Scott, and that is The Necromancer. And this one focuses more on the bad guy's perspective. The Necromancer is the rival of Nicholas Flamel, the guy who's been trying to kill Nicholas Flamel and his, and his loved ones this entire time. And now we get to kind of know him. And this book actually, I gave it five out of five stars, where the previous ones I gave four out of five stars because things started to happen. Now, while I say that, the earlier books were great. They were just a tad bit slow. And I think it was because I didn't realize how many books were in this series. I didn't realize there were six books in this series. So I went into book three thinking in the back of my head, this is a trilogy, this is where the ending's gonna happen, but then there's no ending. And I mean, there's an ending, but there's no like conclusion to the overall story arc. And I'm like, what is going on? Why is there no conclusion? What is happening? I need to know. You get a little bit of that. You don't get the ending yet because it's book four but you start leaning in the right direction. You start finding out about all this bullshit they've been talking about the last four books in book four. So that made me really happy to finally see what they mean by their prophecy. But yeah, so I still really recommend the series. Necromancer, five by five stars. After I finished that book, I picked up The Son of Neptune, which is the second book in the second series by Rick Riordan, featuring Percy Jackson. Um, I skipped the first book because, as you may or may not know, I finished it, The Lost Hero, previously and never or didn't realize that it was like a separate series. Like I did, I didn't realize they were intertwined. So I finally picked up book two. Um, I did give it five out of five stars. I did enjoy where the story is going. I like how the gods acted in this one, and I liked how they put a focus on the Roman side of things versus the Greek side of things. And it was also, you finally realize what's kind of going on, because in book one, there was, you don't realize, you don't know why you're in a different person's shoes other than Percy Jackson's, which was kind of off-putting. But in book two, you're back on Percy's side as he's figuring it out himself. So that was pretty neat. Next, I needed a guilty read, and that was Frostburn by Patricia Briggs. This is book number seven in the series, in the Mercy Thompson series. Mercy Thompson is a skinwalker. She can transform into a coyote. She is living with an alpha wolf pack, or a pack as her neighbor. Things have changed drastically as of this book, and it's slowly becoming more romance-driven, but I think it's being handled really well. It's not, you're not losing Mercy Thompson and her individuality, which I enjoy. Um, I think it's, some books can make the romance the main focus and then you completely lose the main lead character because she becomes this gushy, oh my god, my husband, and la di da di da But in this book, she stays strong, she stays kick-ass. And while she needs help from time to time, so do others. So I actually really liked this one. Um, I like how you're going out of the normal bad guy range in this book too and Mercy has to save the day versus in previous ones where she tried to save the day and ended up having to be saved but yeah highly recommend anything by Mercy uh, by Patricia Briggs I gave this book five out of five stars like I have most of her books it's honestly guys it's been a really good reading month <laughs> Next, I found the audiobook for something that was on my shelf for a really long time, and that is Incarceron by Catherine Fisher. This book is about a fantasy world where a prison was created to house all the people who just shouldn't, couldn't be bothered to be in the real world. 
and now the prison is alive. The prison is controlling itself, it's running everything, it creates the food, it creates the atmosphere, it creates the air, it creates everything, including more humans for the world. And the prison's name is Incarceron. So you're seeing the perspective from two different viewpoints. You are watching the viewpoint of Finn, who cannot remember his childhood, and you are watching the viewpoint of Claudia, who is the daughter of the Warden of Incarceron. Now, Claudia is under the impression that Incarceron is a is a paradise where Finn is just trying to remember who he is. And you get to learn through Incarceron how their stories intertwine and what they do once they find out who they re or what they do once they finally meet. Once I finished Incarceron, I did really want to jump in directly into book two of that series. However, I only had about three or four days to finish the book that I had on my shelf, and that was The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Neffinger. I gave this book three stars, three to five stars. While I understand definitely why people enjoy this book, and there were moments that I clear, I really did enjoy, it was a little off-putting for me. This book is about a woman named Claire Abshire, who meets her future husband when she is six years old. She doesn't know that at the time, however, the man does, and the man, his name is Henry de Tamble. He is, has a disease where he travels randomly back into time, especially under stress, and he can't control where or when he goes, but he is able to at least control most of the time general concepts. It's usually two places of his past or his future. So he, um, you're following the timeline of Claire as she grows up meeting and getting to know Henry up into the point that they meet for the first time from Henry's perspective and then you continue with both of their perspectives. Now I did enjoy the time traveling part I enjoyed how he did wait um, to do things with her even when she was a teenager. However, I was, it was kind of weird for me to have a 40-year-old man who knows that this six-year-old girl is his future wife talking and secretly hanging out in the woods and that kind of weirded me out. And also there was just a lot of unnecessary drug use in the book. It did explain that this is all before Henry knows that she is his wife. It's just, it was very confusing. Um, I will give them that I didn't see the ending coming. There were moments where shit happened and you didn't really see how it happened or why it happened. But you saw, you saw like the, the end scene before you got to the end, but you didn't know it was the end scene until you got to the end. It was, I don't know. It was a really long book too, and that kind of also put me off. So I think if there was more adventure in it, I would have enjoyed it a little bit more, but it was just purely romance based. So three out of five stars. After that book, I needed to know what happened in Incarceron to Claudia and Finn, so I jumped into Safiq by Catherine Fisher, which is the second book in the duology. Immediately jumped into it, could not put it down, had to finish it that night. So good. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. It was phenomenal. I absolutely adore the ending. I adore everything about this book. I adore the characters and the action and the changes that happen and the ending. I didn't expect any of it. It was great. I recommend the series, honestly. Like, it has 3 star, 3.5 star average, but honestly, I really like it. Like, I've heard it's one of those, a lot of books are like this, but it's a love-hate book. I love it, obviously. Love it. Check it out. It's really good. Then I need to jump on the Pop Sugar bandwagon again, so I saw Daughter of Smoke and Bones by Lonnie Taylor. And this book has been on my shelf for quite some time. I have been wanting to read it because I've heard great things about it on booktube. And I finally jumped into it, and what do you know? It's great. I gave this book four to five stars, mostly because 
there were some things that I think that if somebody just explained it, it wouldn't have been as it, as big of an issue as it was. However, I do like the magical system. I like the um, angels versus demons, but it's not as obvious as that. Um, and I really do enjoy the main character. I did really enjoy the main character, Karu, who uses her wishes kind of frivolously at first, and you don't really know much about her, but then you're slowly learning more and more about her, and it's pretty awesome. It was awesome. I liked it. Um, I do anticipate reading the next couple of books in the series. I'm hoping it gets a smidge better, a little less romantic, romantic-y, but it kind of ended on a cliffhanger and it ended in a spot I didn't want it to end in and I really want to know what happened so I need to jump into book two. And if you can't tell, I'm a little hyper. Just a smidge. Speaking of pop sugar and amazing books, the next book I read and finished was one Good Dragon Deserves Another by Rachel Aaron. Now, I actually started this book prior to most of these other books that I've read, but I was reading it in paperback and the rest I was listening to on audiobook, so there you go. But I finished it. It was epic. Freaking epic. Did not see that coming at all. If you don't know what it's about, it is about Julius, a dragon, the youngest of his clan, who is sealed by his mother because he just isn't that great of a dragon. Why? Because he's a nice dragon and he's a good dragon and that is not what dragons stand for. Dragons stand for power and corruption and running everything and taking over the world. AKA the Dragon Queen. No, not really. Anyway, so um, he is just too nice and too good and he's sealed and he finally has gotten to the point where he's running his own business with his really good friend who we might have a crush on but he doesn't really say and she doesn't say and shit hits the fan like always and Julius finally does the thing everybody else wants to do and he stands up for himself against his mother who everybody is terrified of so then you see what happens when that happens and what goes wrong when that happens so it's pretty interesting and you get to learn about all these different characters and their his siblings and it's pretty great honestly and it's nice to see the nice the nice guy the good guy win especially when he's the black sheep of the family <laughs> I gotta say it's pretty nice after I finished that book, the next day I jumped into the audiobook Dearly Devoted Dexter by Jeff Lindsay. This is book two of the Dexter series. Dexter is a serial killer who kills the bad guys. He kills the people who get away with really horrible things, like child pornography. And in this book, he is just lost in this world where he's trying to pretend to be normal even though he's a sociopath and I gave it three out of five stars I put four stars here but I th I'm gonna go with three stars I did enjoy the general concept of the book but uh, the sociopathness is kind of pulling me out of the story. He is playing the character. He's a sociopath. He doesn't have emotions. But when you're trying to feel for the characters, it's kind of bad when you're feeling for everybody else but the character. I like it when he kills bad guys. That part's cool. Rest of it, not so much. After that, I needed another Patricia Briggs fix, so I read book two, Dragon Blood of the series that I started before, Dragon Bones, um, and this was the second book in the duology, and I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. Overall, um, I did enjoy how the characters grew in this book. I liked how there were problems involved and the main character wasn't invincible, which is always nice. Um, he needed help and that's great. So I actually did enjoy that. Um, I was a little confused at the ending, though, and it kind of felt like there could have been a third book. But there's not, so I don't know. I don't know if maybe there's like a third book coming out eventually, 
and it's just because I read it too soon, but I think it's been out for a while. So if there was a third book coming out, then I'm pretty sure it'd be out by now because Mercy Thompson has like 10, so... Then I listened to the audiobook I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson, and this book has been on my TBR for so goddamn long. So long. Finally listened to it. And honestly, it wasn't that bad. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Um, I did enjoy, despite the romance theme, I enjoyed the main concept of the book. I did like that the main character was a gay male, and that in itself started off strong and he was hiding his true self from everybody including his twin sister and it's, it's him and his sister slowly getting out of this crazy sh situation that he they were both thrown into through art and through finally opening up and being true to themselves and honestly it has a good meaning it has a good meaning behind it um, it shows that Yes, there are some shitty ass people out there who won't accept somebody for being gay, but, or it might not be your family. You know, it could be. Hopefully it's not. I accept you, no matter what you are. Unless you're a serial killer, or a murderer, or a rapist. If you're a bad guy, I don't accept you. But as long as you're nice, treat everybody with respect. Then I respect you. For whatever you are, whoever you are. Whatever you want to be. Moving on. The final book I read, slash listened to, I finished today. And I was honestly terrified to read it. And that is The Martian by Andy Weir. Now, I thought I was not going to like this. Everybody says it's amazing. It became a movie. Everybody liked the movie. But it's sci-fi. And usually I am not a sci-fi fan. And that's a problem. So I kept putting it off. I put it off, and I put it off, and I put it off. And then finally, I said, you know, Nikki, you can't put it off anymore. You gotta read it. So I read it, and I died laughing at work. <laughs> I broke down laughing three or four times in two days. It's pretty damn funny. There is some serious situations. Shit does hit the fan, but... Watney's humor, the main character, his humor is spot on for mine. Sarcasm and all. It was great. I loved it. I uh, highly recommend this book. And honestly, I'm kind of thinking of seeing the movie. The only thing I would change, the only thing, is the s little bit of the ending. I don't want to ruin it. I like the way it ended, but I wanted to know just a smidgen more. A bit. Just, just, just a little bit. But I can't tell you what little bit I wanted it without ruining it. <laughs> so, with that being said, I have read a grand total of 19 books this month. Grand, granted, most of them were audiobooks. Please keep that in mind. I am not a superstar. I mean, yeah, no, I am. But, most of them were audiobooks. I do listen to audiobooks while I'm at work. Very few of them were paperback. Um, actually, let's see. One, two, three. Three were paperback out of 19. Just to give you an idea. Those 19 books became a total of 8,456 pages. I do believe, sirs and madams, that I am kicking ass. Even if I am reading audiobooks. This brings my grand total of the year up to 92 books. Again, remember, most are audio. Please don't hate yourself. If you do, please check out the video I posted the other day about what a real reader is because honestly, we're all real readers. Spoiler alert. Moving on. How did you do this month? Did you read a lot? Did you read a little bit? Did you read one book that was fucking fantastic, or a gigantic book that I'm too chicken shit to actually pick up and try? Or have you read any of the books that I just mentioned and loved them or hated them? Let me know down below. I love to talk to 
all of you, please. Also, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, I've become more active on Twitter. I do have an Instagram, not as active on there, but you can follow me on Twitter, and I have been more active on Twitter. And you can subscribe down below, wherever the fuck that is. Like it if you like it, subscribe if you want to, and this is the Dragon Queen, signing off.